Quality of product is essential to continuing success. An outstanding example. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. LSMFT, LSMFT program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. gentlemen, since tonight is our last broadcast of the season, I would like to pay tribute to the star of our show. Fifteen years ago, a kind and gracious young man started his radio career at the tender age of 37. I was, I was awfully tender. And tonight, 15 years later, he's still kind, still gracious, and still 37, and here he is, Jack Benny. Hello again. This is Jack Betty talking. And Don, that was a very silly statement to make. If I was 37 and that was 15 years ago, today I'd be 49. You mean 52? I can get it wholesale. <laughs> anyway, for your information, Don, when I started the radio 15 years ago, I was 22. What are you talking about? I knew you then and you had gray hair. Don, I was born with gray hair. I was worried about the doctor bill. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't pay him slapping me when my back was turned. <laughs> and Don, here's an amazing coincidence. If you read it in the story, you wouldn't believe it. After all these years, who do you think is sitting in the audience this very moment? The doctor. No, his lawyer. The case comes up in court. <laughs> anyway, Don, since this is the last program of the year, I've got a surprise for you. I'm giving everybody a bonus. Here's a check for you. Well, thanks, Jack. I know it isn't much, but it'll... Well, it'll help you get back to California. This check will help me get back to California? <laughs> Turn it over, bro over, brother. There's a road map on the other <laughs> side. <laughs> I nearly killed that one. Good. That was a good joke when I did to that. And Don, never look a gift phone in the mouth. I want to say that right. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Hello, Jack. Hello, hello, hello. I think it's the last program. Let's go nuts all together. <laughs> Mary, I'm glad you came in. I was just telling Don that since this is the last program of the season, I'm giving everybody in the cast a bonus. Oh, Jack, how can you afford it after that bonus you gave me last year? What did he give you, Mary? A dozen bobby pins. <laughs> You got two dozen. That wasn't your fault. Phil Harris got a short haircut and had no use for them. All right, all right, but this year it's different. Now, here's your bonus, Mary. Take this and go out and buy yourself a new dress. Here. Oh, boy, a do-bill at Klein's. <laughs> hmm? Yes, sir. I got that by mentioning them on the air. Uh, when'd you do that? Just now. <laughs> the one that mentioned Klein. Uh-oh, now they owe us another one. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, Jack. Do you mean when you mention the name of a product, they give you one free? Well, sometimes, Mary, but you have to do it cleverly. Oh. Which reminds me, Mary, on the way home, I'm going to stop at Plymouth Rock. <laughs> then I'm going to Pontiac, Michigan. <laughs> And if I can afford it, I'll take you out some night and show you how a cattle acts. Well, you certainly packed them all in. Thanks, Mary. That was a Buick. Say, Mary. Say, Mary, where are you going to spend your vacation this summer? Inside of a Longine watch. I can go along with a plug. Just be happy with your dress. But I'm not kidding, Mary. Where are you going to spend your vacation? In, in Grand Central Station. I like peace and quiet. That joke was written 3 o'clock yesterday. <laughs> it's amazing what 24 hours can do to a gag, isn't it? Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello. Uh, 
Dennis, since this is the last program of the season, I thought it would be... How do you feel, Mr. Benny? Fine. Uh, Dennis, since this is the last program of the season... Are you having any fun, kid? (laughs) A little. Uh, Dennis, since this is the last program... What day are you going home, Mr. Benny? Wednesday. Uh, Dennis, since this is the last... How about a bonus? That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm giving every member of my cast a bonus. Oh, am I a member? <laughs> well, certainly. Is that why you make me pay dues? <laughs> that has nothing to do with it. That money I deduct from your salary I'm putting away for your nest egg. My nest egg? Yeah, Mother Hen Benny will keep it warm for you. <laughs> I don't have to worry about a nest egg, Mary. I'm expecting a call from my sponsor any minute to pick up my option. Believe me, this year I'm going to be even tougher to get than last year. Yeah, you're really tough to get. Well, I was. Oh, sure. The sponsor laid the contract on the table, pointed to the dotted line, and you signed so fast you put half your name on his finger. (laughs) On his finger, on his finger, some joke. Now, let's get on with it. Hey, Mr. Benny, how about my bonus? Oh, yes, I, uh... Oh, wait a minute, I just happened to think of it. I gave you your bonus yesterday. Oh, yes, I forgot. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Uh, what'd you get, Dennis? A dress at Klein's. (laughs) What? With a -a peekaboo waist. (laughs) That's to take home to your mother. And another thing, kid, I got a surprise for you. I may be able to give you a car. A car? Yeah, a few minutes ago, I mentioned the name of a lot of automobiles, the names, and naturally, they'll all send me one. Gee, that won't work, Mr. Benny. I tried it once. I mentioned mercury. What happened? They sent me a thermometer. (laughs) Oh. So I took my temperature. It was 106. What? Boy, was I burned up. Dennis. That's a joke, son. I'm glad you told me. Now, come on, Dennis. Let's have a song, will you? Come on. They say it's wonderful from Annie Get Your Gun, sung by Dennis Day. Very good kid, and I'm happy to know that you're going to be with me next season. Mr. Benny, you tricked me into signing my contract. (laughs) Tricked you? Dennis, your new contract calls for $38 a week. That's what I'm going to pay you, $38 a week. So how did I trick you? When you held me upside down, it looked like 83. (laughs) Oh, stop. Why, Jack, that's the silliest thing I ever heard of. If you wanted to trick Dennis, why didn't you hold the contract upside down? <laughs> With all the pages it had, Dennis was lighter. <laughs> yeah. So let's... All right, folks, you can drive that chair. Well, Harris is sure to be back next year. I'll be here. Lay that applause on Give me enough to run me through the summer, you know. Hey, Bill, I heard that, and you don't have to worry about the summer. I'm giving you and every member of the cast a bonus. Look, Jackson, I know all about your bonuses. If you really want to do something, just give me a little raise in salary. A raise in salary? Phil, you're the only man in the country that can strike because you know you're overpaid now. <laughs> and you can take that miner's lamp off your head. You're not fooling anybody. <laughs> If I gave you a raise, I know what you'd do with it. Now, look, you're wrong this time, Jackson. I'm on the wagon. You're on the wagon? The trains weren't running. I had to get on something. <laughs> oh. Look, Jackson, I haven't had a drink since we've been in New York. What are you talking about? I saw you in a bar last night. You ordered a double scotch. That was to dip my tie in. <laughs> dip your tie in? I can quit drinking the stuff, but I'm not going to stop smelling it. <laughs> Should have known. When you get undressed at night, you hang your clothes in the closet, put your tie in the chandelier. Hey, Phil, let me look at that tie. Is it pure silk? No, it's a blend. Now cut that out! <laughs> Imagine dipping your tie in scotch. Yes, sir, I'm the only guy in town with a wet cravat. <laughs> oh, Harris, when you leave New York, they're going to hang all the comedians at half mast. <laughs> One they should hang, they won't. I mean, they <laughs> people, now you know why I need a vacation. Oh, my goodness, I nearly forgot. Don, hand me that glass of water, please. I want to take this pill. Oh, here you are. Thanks. 
Jack, what was that pill you just took? Well, after our show tonight, I have to go over and appear on Fred Allen's program. But what was the... Benzedrine, I want to keep awake. <laughs> Better off asleep. I wouldn't have to look at those bags under his eyes. <laughs> Alan's got the only face I ever saw with patch pockets. <laughs> oh, Jack, you're just jealous of Fred because he's such a great ad libber. Oh, some great ad libber. I can ad lib better than Alan with one writer tied behind my back. <laughs> Every week it's the same thing. Portland says, Mr. Alan, Mr. Alan, it's time to visit the alley. Shall we go? And then the genius answer. <laughs> well, Portland, as one striptease dancer said to the other, let's take off. <laughs> and those people, and those people he meets, those people he meets down there, that, that Titus Moody. Howdy, bub. Dennis. <laughs> What people see in Alan, I don't know. He tries to read a script, the words get blocked by his nose, then they get kicked around by his tonsils, bounced off his adenoids, and because it comes out different than the way it's written, they say he ad-libs. <laughs> Believe me, I'm a better, I'm, I better, I'm better than he is. That's three betters, I'm three times as good that way. I can ad-lib. Go on. You couldn't add lib a yawn after a gallon of Ovaltine. I can, too. <laughs> say, Phil, you were on Alan's program last week, weren't you? Yeah. And say, Jackson, you want to know something? What? Did you know that I found out something about Senator Claghorn? Oh, what? He's from the South. <laughs> no. So help me, Petrillo. <laughs> Thanks for telling me, Phil. Now, come on, let's have a band now. Okay. Oh, say, Jack. Jack, excuse me a minute. Yes, Don. I may not see you after the show, so I just want to say goodbye now. Don, you mean you're in such a hurry to leave on your vacation? Oh, no, no. I'm going to start my summer job for Lucky Strikes. Summer job? Another program? No, no. I'm going down to North Carolina and pick tobacco. <laughs> Pick tobacco. Don, you mean our sponsor is making you do that? Oh, no, no, Jack. I begged him for the opportunity. You, you what? Just think of it. The whole summer feeling those tobacco leaves. But, Don, look. That fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. But, Don, spending your whole vacation picking tobacco from that? That's my pleasure, Jack. Tobacco that goes into Lucky Wonderful, that makes that strike. Raise my voice and call Chloe. I can just hear you doing it. And as I wait by the magnolia tree, yes. from over the Everglades will come Cleo's answer. That's Chloe's. Maybe that's Cleo. Don, that's the most touching thing I've ever heard. Well, Jack, I... No, 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 Don. Don't say anything to spoil it. Play, Phil. <laughs> And that's one on you, Jackson. This ain't even my band. These are New York boys. Well, how'd you happen to pick them up? Easy. I was just walking down the street and they followed my tie. <laughs> oh. oh. Turn loose, Max. Not till after the show. Hmm. No matter where we go, Phil, you always get the same... I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rock. Yes, sir. What is it, Rochester? I got your trunk all packed and loaded on the mule. Rochester, the railroad strike is over. You got the mule before the strike was on. <laughs> well, I'm taking the train. I'm kind of sorry you're not going back with me, but I'm glad you got that nice job at the Zanzibar Cafe. Oh, thanks for letting me take it, boss. Uh, but ain't I the one that's supposed to get the 90%? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, but I'm keeping it for you for a nest egg. Well, push the hen off. I'm hungry. <laughs> Be safe for me, Rochester, don't worry, and do a good job at the Zanzibar. I will. And before I hang up, boss, I want to thank you and the cast for coming over Tuesday night. The audience sure laughed when you got up and told those jokes. Yeah, and Rochester, I bet nobody there dreamed I'd get up and play the violin. Obviously, the place was full. I don't know about that. They liked it. Oh, by the way, boss, how did you like that routine I did about you and Mr. Allen? Well, I couldn't hear all of it. There was some guy under our table making a lot of noise. Oh, him! That was the plumber Mr. Harris hired. What? He was laying a pipeline to the bar. A pipeline? Big inch, you! Yeah. Well, that was ridiculous. By the way, Rochester, why don't you sing that song, Accentuate the Positive? I always liked the way you did that. I did sing it. You just didn't hear me. That was when you were arguing with the waiter about the check. I wasn't arguing with him. He charged me too much for the beer, and I was just pointing out his mistake. That was no mistake in a nice club. You don't get a nickel back on the bottle. <laughs> Clip joint. Anyway, Roger, you go on and have a good time here, and I'll see you when you get home. By the way, I have a little bonus for you. I'll mail it to you. Never mind. I'll go down to Klein's and pick it up myself. <laughs> All right. Goodbye, Rochester, and good luck. So long. All the bar, that is. Well, kids, in a few minutes, our last program will be over. And we probably won't be seeing much of each other until September. But uh, here are your assignments for this week. On Wednesday night, you must listen to the radio because Dave Rose is going to conduct his Waukegan Concerto, which is written especially for me. And next Sunday at the same time, I want you to listen to the Frank Morgan Show, which is replacing us for the summer. It's going to be great. Frank has always done a swell job, and I know he's going to be back in fine form. And now, kids, before I kiss each one of you goodbye, I want to... Come in. Well, hello, Jack. Hello, Ed. Look, kids, it's Ed Sullivan. Ed, it, it was nice of you to drop in on my last program. You know the gang, Mary, Don, Dennis, and Phil. Hello, Ed. Hello, Ed. Nice to see you. Yes, Jack, I've met them all except Phil. Yeah, we ain't never had the pleasure. Well, I'll remedy that. Phil, I'd like you to meet Ed Sullivan. Ed is the famous columnist. Well, hello, Ed. When'd you leave Moscow? I said columnist. <laughs> My goodness, Phil. Uh, tell me, Ed, Ed, what's the uh, him I'm going to have back next year? <laughs> Ed, what's the uh, occasion for this visit? Well, Jack, I came over to present you with an award. An award for me? Mm-hmm, but first I'd like to get a little interview. See, our readers would like to know exactly what goes on behind the scenes in a radio show. You know, who are the people behind the performance? Well, let's see. First, I must give credit to my writers. John Tackerberry, Milt Josephsberg, George Balzer, and Sam Perrin. I think they're four of the smartest, cleverest, funniest, and most intelligent writers in the business. Well, Jack, it's very nice of you to say that about your boys. They wrote the line. He had to say it. <laughs> But, Ed, you can take my word for it, they're very clever. Oh, I know that, Jack, and I've heard a lot about them. Jack, isn't it true that Sam Perrin and George Bowles are about the Broadway show, Are You With It? Yes, yes, they did that with my permission. Mm -hmm. And didn't John Tackerberry write that song, Pickle in the Middle? Yes, yes, he did that with my permission. And isn't your other writer, Mill Josephberg, expecting a baby soon? Yes, he... Yes, yes, he is. <laughs> If Hilda is listening, we hope she feels all right. <laughs> well, now, Jack, who are some of the other people who are important to your program? Well, there's my special assignment man, Hilliard Marks, producer Bob Ballin, musical director Malin Merrick, secretary Jane Tucker and Bert Scott, and last but not least, Herman McShaughnessy. <laughs> Herman McShaughnessy? What does he do? He explains Dick Tracy to Phil Harris. Oh. <laughs> now, on the acting... On the acting side of the ledger... We have Mel Blank, who plays the part of my French violin teacher, also my parrot. Artie Auerbach, the hot dog salesman. Sarah Berner and B. Benadera, who play the telephone operators. Dick Lane, who plays the part of Steve Bradley, my press agent. Janine Roos, who played Phil Harris's little daughter. 
Frank Nelson, who always pops up on the show, looks at me and says, yeah. And Joe Kearns, the keeper of my vault. Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman, who really own this program, but let me guest star on it during the weeks they're off. My NBC engineers, George Foster and Charlie Buck, my sound men, Floyd Caton and Par Parker Cornell. And finally, Wilbur Klingenpeel. <laughs> Wilbur Klingenpeel? He explains Dick Tracy to Herman McShaughnessy. <laughs> well, well, I guess that takes care of them all. Well, unless you want to mention the janitor who sweeps up after the show. <laughs> no, no, he left me and is now writing for Fred Allen. <laughs> Uh, now, Ed, how oh, about... Mr. Sullivan, would you mind putting something in your column for me? Why, not at all, Dennis. I'll be glad to. What's the occasion? My mother had a baby. <laughs> well, that is news. When? 22 years ago. <laughs> Dennis. That's his name. Oh, stop it. <laughs> now, Ed... Now, Ed, I don't want to appear anxious, but how about this award you're going to give me? Huh? Huh? Jack, let go of my lapel. Oh, oh, pardon me. I, I, uh, no, I forgot myself. But what kind of an award is it, Ed? Well, it's called the Ed Sullivan Award for Modern Screen Magazine, Mary, and it's being given to Jack Benny because of his outstanding radio programs during the past season. Oh, Ed, that's such a thrill, really. I'm overwhelmed. I, I feel faint. Quick, Phil, let him smell your tie. <laughs> And so, Jack, on behalf of Modern Screen Magazine, it gives me great pleasure to award you this gold plaque. Gee, thanks. Jack, 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 stop fighting it. It's gold. <laughs> oh, but Ed, this is a, a Modern Screen Award, and I haven't made a picture in two years. That had something to do with it, too. <laughs> See. You know, Mary, it's really a great thrill for me to give this award to Jack because he made his very first radio appearance on my program 15 years ago. That's right, Mary. Uh, who sponsored that program? Well, let's see, Geraldine Hair Tonic. <laughs> Jack made his debut on a hair tonic program? On a hair tonic program? On a hair tonic program? What an opening for an actor who ain't worried about options. <laughs> Bill, one more word out of you. I'll light a match to your tie and blow you out of here. Now, quiet. Well, I guess I'd better run along, Jack. Uh, how about another game of golf tomorrow? Certainly, Ed, if you're not afraid that I'll beat you again like I did yesterday. Wait a minute. Say, Ed, did Jack really beat you at golf? Why do you think I had to give him this award? <laughs> oh, for goodness sake, Ed. It was our agreement that you weren't supposed to mention that. Now you've spilled the beans. Well, goodbye, Ed, and thanks very, very much. You're welcome, Jack, and so long. What are you laughing at? Nothing, Jack. But if you could get Joan Crawford into a game of golf, maybe you'd win an Oscar. <laughs> Mary, Mary, don't be so... Say, I wonder if Joan does play golf. <laughs> at the same time. Again, I want to thank everybody associated with this program and also all of my listeners, even those of you who can't stand Jack Benny.